Welcome pre-K scholars. My name is Miss Lowe and I'm a pre-K teacher from Marsh Point Elementary. Today we're going to learn some math things. Our math lesson today is on patterning, counting, and combining and naming quantities or adding. If you're ready, let's get started. Patterns. This year in pre-K, we've learned that a pattern is something that repeats or goes over and over again. We can make patterns with pictures, with letters, with colors and shapes. We can even make patterns with music and sound. Today, we're gonna make some ocean patterns. So let's look at the pattern that we have here. We're gonna use some ocean pictures to read a pattern. You can read with me. We've got crab, fish, crab, fish. What comes next? We're missing two things to complete our pattern. What do you think comes next? Did you say crab? That's right, we need a crab next in our pattern. And what comes after the crab? After the crab, we need that fish to complete our pattern. So let's read our pattern together again. We've got crab, fish, crab, fish, crab, fish. Now we also learned in pre-K that we can use letters to name our patterns. Let's use letters to name our pattern. We have two pictures, so we'll need two letters to name this pattern. You can read with me. A, B, A, B, A, B. Great job, we made an A, B pattern. Let's try another one. This time we're gonna use two different ocean creatures. We're gonna use an octopus and a jellyfish. Let's see if you can help me complete the pattern. Octopus, jellyfish. Octopus, jellyfish. What comes next? You decide. Did you say octopus? That's right. And what about after the octopus? What's missing in that last box to complete our pattern? Did you say jellyfish? That's right. Let's look at our pattern. You can read it with me. Octopus, jellyfish, octopus, jellyfish, octopus, jellyfish. Great job, we made a pattern. Now let's use those letters again so that we can name our pattern. How many different pictures do we have in this pattern? Did you say two? That's right, you can even use your math fingers. One, two. We have two pictures, so we'll need two letters to name our pattern. Let's name our pattern. You can read with me. A, B, A, B, A, B. Great job, you helped me make another ocean pattern. Let's try another one, but this time, let's see if we can try a harder pattern. Look at the ocean creatures that we have now. We have a starfish and a sea turtle. Let's see if we can read this pattern and find out what's missing. Starfish, sea turtle sea turtle. Starfish, hmm, what comes next? Look carefully. What do you think we need next? Which ocean creature? Did you say sea turtle? That's right. Now look again, that last box is miss missing another ocean creature. Did you say sea turtle again? That's right. Let's look at our pattern. We've got starfish, sea turtle, sea turtle. Starfish, sea turtle, sea turtle. How many different pictures do we have in this pattern? Did you say two? That's right, we do have two pictures. Now one of our pictures we use more than once, so we'll use a letter more than one time. Let's look at it and see if we can read it using letters. A, B, B. A, B, B. That's right, every time we see the same picture, it gets the same letter. So our sea turtle got B every time we saw him. That's how we made our A, B, B pattern. Great job, friends. Now we're gonna look at our wreck and wreck. In school, you guys have a wreck and wreck that looks something like this. It has 10 beads on each of 10 rows. We're gonna use a different looking wreck and wreck so that we can practice some counting together. Here 
here's our wreck and wreck that we're gonna use today. Let's count and make sure that there's 10 beads on this one row. You count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. That's right, there's 10 beads on each row. Let's add some more rows to this wreck and rack so it looks just like the wreck and rack you have at school. We have one row, let's add another row. Now we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And let's slide these beads back to this side. There we go, now it looks just like your wreck and wreck at school. Now we've learned with the wreck and wreck that we can count by ones, we can count by fives, or we can count by tens. Let's count by tens to see how many beads are on our wreck and wreck. You count with me. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, uh-oh, let's slide this one, 50, 60, keeps escaping from us, there we go, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. That's right, our wreck and wreck has 100 beads. Let's take it back down to one row so that we can see if we can do some counting practice. There we go. We're gonna take it back to one row. Now we have 10 beads. I'm gonna slide some beads over and I want you to see if you can tell me how many are on one side and how many are on the other. Let's start here. All right, let's count the beads on this side. We've got one, two, three. Let's see if we can write that number. Three. To write a three, we say curve around and around again. Great job. Let's count the ones on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can write a seven, slide to the right and slant it down. So now we have three beads, and on the other side, we have seven. So we're gonna use the plus sign. That means that we're getting more. We have three plus seven. And how many do we have all together? We're gonna write the equal sign. How many beads do we have all together? Let's count them all together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's write a ten. Make a one and then a zero. So we can now read our math story. It says three plus seven equals 10. Great job, let's try another one. All right, how many are on this side of the wreck and wreck? You count and decide. Did you say eight? Great job, let's write an eight on this side. To make an eight, we say, make an S and close the gate. All right, now we're gonna write our plus sign because we're getting more. How many beads are on this side? Did you say two? That's right, let's write a two. Curve around and slide to the right. Now we're gonna write an equal sign. And how many do we have all together? Eight and two more make, did you say 10? That's right, each row of the wreck and wreck has 10 beads. Now we can read our math story. It says eight plus two equals 10. Great job, friends, let's try one more. All right, let's look at this side of the wreck and wreck. How many beads do you see? Did you say four? That's right, let's write a four. Down, over, down some more. Now we're gonna write our plus sign because we're getting more. We're adding. How many do you see on this side of the wreck and wreck? Did you say six? That's right, let's write a six. Curve around and curl it up. Now we write an equal sign. And let's see, how many do we have all together? Four plus six equals 10. That's right, each row of our wreck and wreck has 10 beads. So now we can read our math story. It says four plus six equals 10. 
Great job making tens, friends. Now, we've also learned in pre-K this year that you can count in different ways. Careful counters like to line things up, but we also learned that we can count things in a circle. So today, there's some fish that are swimming in a circle. That's how they like to swim. Now, sometimes it's hard to count things in a circle if we don't know where to start. We might count things more than once, or we might miss something. So we've used a special sign today to tell us where to start counting. This arrow is our marker. Sometimes at school, we use different things as our markers. Not our marker that we color with, but a marker that tells us where to start and stop counting. Today, our yellow arrow is our marker. And now we're gonna count these fish that are in a circle. You can count with me. We'll start here next to the marker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great job, there are eight. And we stopped right here because our marker told us we'd already counted this fish. This is where we started. But what if we moved our marker? Would we still have eight fish? Let's try it. Now our marker has moved and told us to start with this fish. Let's start with this fish and count. You can count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great job. Even though we moved the marker, we still have eight fish. Now we're going to try doing it with a paper plate. You might have one at home and you can use this plate to help you count. Today, I'm going to use some goldfish to help me count. You can use whatever snack item you have at home. So let's put some goldfish on our plate. Now these fish, they wanna swim in a circle, so I'm gonna put them around my plate in a circle. There you go, the fish are in a circle. Now I'm gonna use something as my marker. Today I'm gonna use a green Unifix cube as my marker, but you could use something different at home. I'm gonna set it next to this fish so I know where to start and where to stop. Can you count with me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We had seven fish. Now let's move the marker and see if we still have the same number if we place the marker somewhere else. Let's try this fish. You can count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We know to stop there because we started with this fish. That's what our marker told us. Let's add some more fish. All right, they have to swim in a circle too. So let's see if we can get them in the circle. Now, all of our fish are swimming in a circle. Let's move the marker somewhere else. All right, you count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Great job, we have 10 fish in our circle. Let's move the marker one time. There we go, last count. You count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. We had 10 fish swimming in our circle. Great job, friends. Now, let's talk about our 10 frame. We like to count things in tens, and our tin frame has tin spots, which allows us to count. Let's see if we can add some things onto our tin frame. Right now, we have nothing on it, but we're gonna look at some counters on our tin frame. Let's try this. How many circles do you see in the tin frame? Did you say four? That's right, let's count them together. One, two, three, four. Great job. Now, let's try looking at a different tin frame and adding some things onto it. We're gonna use two different color counters to figure out how many to put on our tin frame. You can use things that you have at home to, make, to put on one of yours. I'm gonna use a number cube or a dice to help me make numbers. All right, let's see. How many did I get? One, two. We're gonna add two green cubes to our tin frame. Now, how many more do we need to make 10? Let's choose something different and add it on our tin frame to see. You count with me. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So two green cubes and eight blue cubes make 10. Two plus eight equals 10. Let's try another. We're gonna roll our number cube again. What number did we get this time? Did you say four? That's right, let's count to be sure. One, two, three, four. Let's place cubes to see. One, two, three, four. How many more do we need to make 10? Did you say six? I think you're right, let's try. One, two, three, four, five, six. Great job. Four green cubes and six blue cubes make 10. Four plus six equals 10. Now let's see if we can compare sets. In pre-K, we like to look and see how many are in a group and then decide if there's greater than, less than, or equal. Look at the number that I have on my screen. What number do you see here? That's five. Let's see if we can put five seahorses in this box. Oops. Well, let's try it over here. We'll use our counters. Here we go. Let's try and put five in this side. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm gonna write the number five at the top. To make a five, we say down, around, put on a hat. Now we've made five. Now our number that was in the other box was a three. Let's write a three. Curve around and around again. Now let's put three counters in this box. One, two, three. Now look at our two sets. We have five blue and three green. Which set has more? Can you point to it? Are you pointing to the number five? That's right, five is more. So five is gonna get an open mouth. Let's draw the sign for greater than. Now let's read it. It says five is greater than three. That means five is bigger. Let's try another one. We're going to clear our board and wipe it off. All right. I'm thinking of a number that comes after three. What number comes after three? Four. That's right. Let's write it four. Down, over, down some more. Now, let's use those goldfish I had before. One, two, three, four. Now, let's think of a number for our other set. I'm thinking of a number that comes before five. Listen carefully to my clue. I'm thinking of a number that comes before five. Did you say four? You're right, four comes before five. Let's write a four. Down, over, down some more. So we need four goldfish in this set. One, two, three, four. Hmm, look at our two sets. What can you tell me about them? Did you say they're the same? You're right, we have four goldfish in this set and four goldfish in this set. They're equal, is that what you said? You're right, four and four are the same or equal. Let's write the equal sign. Four and four are equal. Let's try one more. We're gonna clear our board and take away our numbers. Let's see, I'll give you another number clue. I'm thinking of a number that comes before eight. What comes before eight? Listen to my clue carefully, before eight. Did you say seven? That's right, let's get our seven. Slide to the right and slant it down. Let's use our number cubes. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
Seven. Seven blue cubes in this set. Let's think of another number. I'm thinking of a number that comes after five. After five. Did you say six? If so, you're right. Let's write our six. Curve around and curl it up. Let's get six counters on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now let's look at our two sets. We have seven blue counters and six green counters. Which set do we have more of? You can point to it. Are you pointing to the side that has seven? That's right, seven is more than six. So we can use the greater than sign. The bigger number gets the open mouth. Now we can read it. It says seven is greater than six. What if we wanted to make them equal? Hmm, if we wanted to make these two sets equal, what could we do? Let's look at our greens. How many more green do we need to make seven? Did you say one more? Let's see, we had six and we got one more. Let's count to be sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's right, six and one more made seven. Now our two sets are equal. Good job, friends. Now, let's see if we can read a story. And there's some math that we're gonna do inside this story. The story we're gonna read today is the three little fish and the big bad shark. And the author of this story is Ken Geist. The author writes the words. The illustrator, what does the illustrator do? Did you say draw the pictures? That's right, the illustrator draws the pictures. The illustrator of this story is Julia Gorton. And we're reading this story today with permission from Scholastic Publishers. The Three Little Fish and the Big Bad Shark. The Three Little Fish and the Big Bad Shark. Once upon a time, there lived a mama fish and her three little fish, Jim, Tim, and Kim. Hmm, Jim, Tim, and Kim. Those are rhyming words. It is now time, said the mama, for each of you to make a home in the deep blue sea. So off they went. Let's count the fish. There were three baby fish. One, two, three, and one mama fish. How many fish is that all together? Did you say four? Let's see. One, two, three, four. Three and one more makes four. The first little fish named Jim swam away and met a seahorse playing in some seaweed. Can I have some of the seaweed so I can build a house? Take as much as you can carry, said the seahorse. Jim gathered the seaweed and made a weedy little house. Do you think the house of seaweed was very strong? Hmm. Jim had just finished building his seaweed house when he heard the big, bad shark knocking at the door. Little fish, little fish, let me come in. The little fish trembled and replied, not by the skin of my thinny fin fin. Then I'll munch and I'll crunch and I'll smash your house in, roared the shark. You think the fish is frightened? So the big bad shark munched and he crunched and he ate up every bit of the seaweed house. And Jim swam away just in time. Where do you think he's going to swim to? Did you say his brother or his sister's house? Let's see if you're right. Soon, Jim found his brother. Tim said, don't worry, Jim. We fish stick together. Now let's count the fish. One, two. You can help me build a sandy little house. Do you think the sandy house will be stronger than the seaweed house? Hmm. Jim and Tim had just started to relax in the sandy little house when the big bad shark came knocking at the door. Little fish, little fish, let me come in. 
To which the brave little fish replied, Not by the skin of my finny fin fin. Then I'll munch and I'll crunch and I'll smash your house, roared the shark. So the big bad shark munched and he crunched until he got a sandy mouthful and the house crumbled. Jim and Tim swam and swam. Where are they swimming to? Until they reached their sister, Kim. Now let's count the fish. One, two, three. Two and one more made three. Kim was setting up her house in an old wooden ship. The big bad shark destroyed our houses. Don't worry, you can live with me, said Kim. And they did. The three little fish had just finished lunch when they heard the big, bad shark knocking at their door. Little fish, little fish, let me come in, to which the smart fish replied, not by the skin of my finny fin fin, then I'll munch and I'll crunch and I'll smash your house in, roared the shark. Do you think he'll be able to smash the ship? Let's see. The big bad shark munched and he crunched, but he could not smash the house in. And all his teeth fell out. The three little fish were safe at last, and the shark had to eat seaweed. Did you like that story? I did too. And you know, there's some math that we can find in that story. Let's look. In this story, there were three little fish. You can count with me. One, two, three. And there was one big bad shark. How many characters were that all together? Let's see if we can count and find out. One, two, three, four. That's right, we had three little fish plus one big bad shark, and that made four characters all together. Great job, friends. Now your job today is to see if you can read a story and you can add the characters in your story. Don't forget to try and make patterns and to come back and see us again soon. Thanks for learning with me today.